Interview and job search strategies that work. Please indulge me in this Veterans Day episode where I listen to two individuals talk about their love of the country and their relatives and the, the sacrifice that their relatives have made uh, for the country on this Veterans Day. Yeah, my father, I mean, he was WW2 Army front lines. I mean, this guy couldn't talk about it because the gruesome stuff he went through. Um, he, we were surprised he lived as long as he did because he was trying to escape on drugs and alcohol every day of his life till he died. Uh, it was a strict home, it was a hard home, but it was a loving home too, but it was never said. You know what I'm saying? That's where I came from. It was never said. It was never really shown, but I knew. You knew. Yeah. So at the Veterans Hospital in Cincinnati, I was with him in his last moments. And, you know, he's laying there and he's going to die and we know it. I'm the only one there, all the siblings or anybody else. I'm the only one there. And I said, Dad, this is what I want to do for you to remember me into the next life. I said, everybody that was a veteran in the military, I want to thank everyone's, everyone that I can. I want to thank them and shake their hands. I said, would that mean anything to you? And he started crying. And he said, yes. And he took his last breath. Wow. That was it. Wow. So I'm a man of my word that I do. If I ask if you were in the military, there's a reason why they were you or anybody. I don't remember to ask everybody because maybe it's not polite with some people, but if I know about it that you're in the military, I'm going to shake your hand and say thank you. Do you know why? Out of respect. Because I'm a man of my word to my father, too. I'll take that to my grave. Yeah. So, you know? Yeah. I've got an uncle that's 98 years old, wow. World War II, mm -hmm. still works two days a week at Arcanum Hardware. Arcanum. My hometown yeah, area. You know, I talked about that. Yes. And I have so much respect for him. Mm -hmm. And, you know, family man, all the stuff that he went through. Mm -hmm. And he just went and graduated high school a couple years ago. Wow. Sweet. Because he's done everything he wanted to do. Wow. He left high school at 15 to go to the military. Wow. Mm -hmm. And serve his country. Wow. And I have a couple other uncles that went with him. Um, it was in World War II. And my whole family has in the, been in the Army or one of the branches, except for me. They would let me in have bad knees. Um, my dad was in. My uncle couldn't because he had eye problems. But almost all my family has been in the military, including my son, my oh. oldest son. He just got out last August. And it's, you, you develop, even, even if you don't have that, you should have respect for them yep. because of what they've done, what yep. they've done. And I'm like you. When I send an email, if I get somebody calling me, I'll text support warranty. I get somebody from the military, send me an email. So my first thing is thank you for your service every you, time. You and I appreciate the military personnel that have served this country more so than the, yep. than the government does. Oh, you got that right. Period. You got that right. I've got a brother that's, that's retired as Master Sergeant. I've got a cousin who so, retired very high. He was in the 80s. He was lost for three years on secret stuff with the stealth. Oh, when they bombed the first war over there, uh -huh. when they bombed that barracks, he was in that barracks and got out 30 seconds before the bomb hit him. Mm -hmm. I had I had a lottery number, but it never got pulled. Tail end of cleanup of Vietnam, so I missed it. Missed it. It's not that I wouldn't have gone. I would have gone, but it didn't get pulled, and I didn't volunteer. Yeah. Um, I uh, I believe in serving the country. Okay, mm -hmm. love this country, but not really, Mister Pro. Isn't there an alternative to war? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, are we smart enough? Can we can we fix this? Talk whatever. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Can yeah. be fixed. I mean, haven't we learned enough? Really? Yeah. Is it worth it? Yeah. <laughs> you know, you know, you look at Reagan. Reagan, they were fearful of him. Yeah. That button. Oh yeah. Okay. okay. Then he went through these years of these people that are, how should I say, don't want to do anything. Sure. And cater to those people. Yeah. Even yeah. do treasonous things, in yeah. my opinion, uh, against certain countries, yeah. and then turn around. Oh, we got somebody up there who's got some backbone and says, so, "Hey, I'm not messing with you." Yeah. 
Yeah. No? So right. let's go back to the military personnel, if I may, real quickly here, just mm -hmm. to make a point. Because if I don't, I'll forget getting older. Anyway, so we'll take a retired senator, politician who gets great babies for the rest of his life. Yeah. Nothing gets cut. Okay? But then you take a guy who served World War II. He was in the hospital, Veterans Hospital, mm -hmm. and I'm with him, and they had cut every and all benefits they could possibly cut as much as they could. Mm -hmm. So my question is, why? Really? He went over, he caught, literally caught buddy's heads. It was gruesome stuff he couldn't talk about much. Mm -hmm. uh, lived his life in hell for them to appreciate him enough to just keep cutting his benefits by, and then you have liars politicians that mm -hmm. they've got all their benefits till the day they die. Something's wrong with that picture, guys. Yep. Okay? Yeah. Um, my mother and father-in-law came here from Budapest, Hungary. Oh, really? 1957. Wow. My wife's parents. In 1957, my father-in-law worked for the parliament during the revolution. They put a hit out on him. So he and my mother-in-law came to this country in 1957. And I'm thankful for that because I have my wife, okay? Um, so, zoom. Let's, let's, let's zoom ahead. He never came over here and expected and asked for anything for free. They had $50 in two suitcases and my mother and father-in-law, and that was it. They went to work, he went to work in a factory making $1.30 an hour, learned our culture, learned our language, didn't know our language, didn't know anything. And he didn't ask for, and there's a reason why I'm saying that, he didn't ask for anything from our government or anybody. Mm -hmm. He just rolled up his sleeves and got busy, okay? Corresponded during his life with, with several presidents, actually. Reagan was one of them. Um, lived in Sydney, Ohio all his life, my mother and father-in-law. He died two years ago, and he was 95 years old. Wow. He started an insurance business in the 70s. He had two furniture shops prior to that he owned. He started an insurance business in the 70s. Um, did very well. Yeah. You don't hear about stuff like no, that anymore. Don't. All you hear is negativity yeah. and all this other nonsense. That's yeah. why I don't have a newspaper anymore. Agreed. Why don't I watch TV? Yeah. I don't watch the news. It's depressing. No, I, I, all fake. I, mute, I muted that for this reason. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I used to... Um, Sorry, guys. Yeah. Um, I used to be the guy that would have TVs go on, newspapers, Wall Street, this, that, and everything else. I learned about it wasn't news. It was about sensationalism. Mm -hmm. It was about what the media can make mm -hmm. in the way of points, as I call it, yeah. or ratings or whatever. Sure. Okay? I heard what you said. I don't watch the news. Um, there is no truth. I don't read the newspapers. No, I don't. There is no truth. I don't have my head in the sand. I kind of know what goes on, but I pay attention to what people say. Mm -hmm. I'd rather listen to people than I would to see it in the news.